welcome to this Thursday's edition of DC Today. Today is April the 18th, and it's great to be with you. We had a positive or a slightly positive day on the Dow, at least. We closed 24 points higher, but really the market was up, you know, much more in the morning, and we kind of the same Groundhog Day as yesterday, which is we, we were up in the morning, and then we sort of gave way through most of the trading session. We did close off of the lows, but just eked out a tiny gain, basically fair value on the Dow. Both the uh, S&P and NASDAQ were negative on the day. The S&P has been lower now uh, five days in a row. So that's the longest of the year so far in 24. Although the down days really haven't all been all that much either. So it's just sort of consolidating is what I've written about several days now. Um, we had uh, some initial jobless claims data out today. Same as it's been for several months. It's a 212 versus 215 expected. So slightly better. But, um, you know, continued strength and employment is a good thing. So we'll take that. The uh, Philly Fed news um, uh, or Philly Fed manufacturing index today came out much better than expected, actually. It was a positive 15 number. I don't expect you to really know necessarily what that means, but just understand that compared to a negative 0.5, which was what was expected, it was a much, much stronger than expected manufacturing data in that region. And those things are good. We're seeing strength in manufacturing more or less pretty much across the board, across the country. So these are good things um, in the economy. Existing home sales were uh, slightly higher, which beat expectations a little bit, which will take it. You know, housing has just been kind of stuck. It's the price part of it has been fine because there are no transactions happening um, or there are very few transactions. Um, in, in inventories were actually up 4.7% on the month, which is good. It means at least there's some more listings out there. So maybe some more transactions can help some price discovery in the housing market. But uh, it's still kind of a weird thing. And it's it's because mortgage rates have now crept back above the 7% handle. So 30-year mortgage rates uh, for Fannie Mae across the country are in the sevens now, again. And so that's going to you know thaw things out a little bit, um, or, or sorry, freeze things up a little bit in housing. Uh, applications to purchase a home were up on the week, but are still down about 10% year over year. So that's just going to 23, where things were already kind of slow there. Um, there was a question in there about, um, does the, the, actually it was a question, and then it related to a Wall Street Journal, sorry, a Bloomberg article about is the um, benefit of, of, of higher interest income in the, in the economy, meaning the interest rates have now increased. So people are earning more interest on their savings. They're earning more interest on their, um, you know, things like fixed income, their bonds, things like that. And, and that's, those are good thing. That's cash flows that are going into people's pockets. So is that stimulative enough to offset the, uh, the hurt you know, or, or the downside of higher interest rate on borrowing costs and things like that. The article sort, sort of took the stance that this higher interest income was this sort of little secret sauce in the economy that was really a good thing. And it was causing, that was sort of the reason why maybe the economy has held in there better. So my response is basically, so, so first the short answer is I don't agree with the article. There's a lot of reasons for it. I mean, um, sure, there were some wealthy people that noticed some higher interest income most people don't have a whole bunch of savings and they don't have a whole lot of investments if you look at the average American. So, um, you know, what they get more sensitive to is, you know, higher in credit card, higher credit card costs, higher mortgage rates, um, you know, things that, uh, that they, they have to deal with more on an everyday basis. And the consumer is two thirds of the economy. So we got to keep that part in mind. Um, yes, higher interest income for some is helpful and Theoretically, they would spend some more, but also keep in mind the propensity of a of that kind of share class of person um, to spend more when they get a little bit more money is much lower than it is on the lower tiers um, of the economy. Um, they're just more impacted uh, one way or the other by it. The other thing I mentioned is just keep in mind there's a derivative effect of having interest rates be say double inflation or 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 you know considerably higher than inflation, which is where they are now. We're at five and a quarter to five and a half on rates. Inflation may be in the high twos, low threes. So it's it's a fairly restrictive policy. But you just got to think about what small businesses weren't able to be started, which leverage buyouts weren't, weren't able to happen, you know, which M&A activity didn't didn't occur, which investments weren't made. Um, th those things um, are are bigger than uh, 
than some higher interest income that some might feel. The other thing in the article was it quoted things like um, the fact that the U.S. government has $35 trillion in outstanding treasury debt now. So that must mean that since most Americans own it, that they're getting these higher interest payments from it. And that must be a good thing. Um, again, it goes back to everything I just said. The, the, you know, people, what, who owns the debt? I mean, it's largely you know, the biggest holder is the Federal Reserve, first off. It was a $9 trillion balance sheet. Now it's down to a $7.5 trillion balance sheet. But all of those interest payments that are made are just recycled back into the government. They're not actually used to buy things and, and create velocity of money in the economy. So that's sort of a nothing burger, I'll call it, on those interest payments. And then you have, you know, most treasuries owned in the big banks and different things like that, which isn't necessarily going in to benefit anyone other than the interest income of the, of the bank. And, the, and that's fine. But, you know, in a higher rate environment, it's not like those banks are able to really produce a whole bunch of loans to put that back into the economy. Again, we're looking at velocity of money. So my, my um, I think my points are, are, are highly convicted in them. I, I think I'm I think I'm right. I understand the article, though. There's some there's some logical sense to it. Um, it's just it's not what's uh, it's more the tail that not not wagging the whole dog type of thing. So I hope that's helpful and interesting. Um, it was a great question, by the way. Um, the particular person who I asked these questions, I always enjoy getting them. So I, I encourage to keep them coming. They're always fun um, and, and happy to discuss any of this anytime with anyone. Uh, with that, I'm going to let you go in the evening, uh, get into your Thursday afternoons, hopefully with, uh, with uh, some evening plans or family plans and something fun. Um, I hope you have a good weekend. If I don't talk to you, uh, please do reach out with your questions. And tomorrow we'll have Dividend Cafe live in your inbox before the weekend. Take care, all. Thanks. Mm -hmm.